Sims. You get to hear that moment. And then, um, and then before we go live on Facebook, as more people come in, I just want to make sure that all of you, uh, all of you know where you are. Um, you are, you are here part of this amazing free class on how to build an email marketing machine that actually works with Mary Cheatham King, Meg Gravely, and they are not only wizards on this topic, you guys, <laughs> they are genuinely entertaining while they talk about it. Um, <laughs> So, so we're just really proud that they're here. We're excited that all of you guys are here as well. Hey, I'm, I'm going to make How sure you, that everyone is muted. Um, but uh, enter your questions into the chat as we keep going. Um, at the very end, uh, they're going to take questions. And so um, I'll be compiling those throughout the class today. Everything will be recorded. If you have to miss part of it or whatever, you know someone who's like, ah, shoot, I couldn't be there. We will be sending out the recording after this. It will also be on Pivot Shift Ahead. And with that, I'm sending it over to you, ladies. We're going to go live on Facebook in a few seconds. Awesome. Grace, you're the MVP. Thank you. No kidding, Grace. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks so much. Awesome. So MC, you want to get started? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So hi, everybody. Thank you all for being here. We're excited. Um, my name is Mary Cheatham King, and this is Meg Gravely, and we have a real estate team um, on the coast of North Carolina. It is in Carteret County, um, which if you're not familiar with Carteret County, um, it is if you've heard of Beaufort or Emerald Isle, Atlantic Beach, Pine Knoll Shores, Moorhead City, those are all areas that we cover. Um, and so we know that we don't have a whole lot of time with you guys today, so we want to get started if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um just to give you guys some background, our team has been around for about seven years. Um, we have five agents and we have about 18 admin. So we are very admin heavy, which is um, a model that really works. They are muted. You're uh -oh, muted. You guys, I think you got muted in the process. So if you could unmute yourselves real quick. Hello. We're then we really get going. There you Hi. go. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. So rolling right along, we've been around for about seven years and Meg has a, a cool screen that'll show you our growth. Um, so this shows you just over the last seven years, kind of how we've grown. Um, we live in an area that has a population of about 68,000 people. So relatively small population, a lot of growth. Needless to say, we've made a ton of mistakes. Yes. And learn from those. Um, you, She presents a, a lot of grace with our team, speaking of grace. Wow. Um, but one thing that I do want to point out about this graph before we kick it off with um, kind of an aha we've had recently is between 20 and 19 and 2020, um, you see kind of a, a large jump in our GCI and in our volume. And um, it was 2019 into 2020 when we really started using email as the backbone of our marketing. So we'll get into the logistics of that in a little bit, but um, just wanted to point out that email really is a powerful tool that we utilize it's our most utilized marketing tool. That's exactly right. So 1100% growth over these seven years that we've been in business. And we attribute a lot of that to our consistent emails and the strategies that we use to make them really strong. Absolutely. So Mary Cheatham and I were chatting recently about the client relationship cycle, which we are certain all of you guys have seen at some point, but um, we had an interesting aha about um, kind of how it works. I want to kind of dive into that. Yeah. So here's what I would say. What I would say is um, that, you know, I think it's really important when you're thinking about emails, let's start really big and talk about what the goal is of a really strong email. So then we can calibrate it and execute. Yeah. So if you look at these sections of kind of the different shades of blue, this shows like when you, when you bring a lead into your orbit, it's hard to do, right? And then you've got to enter into a relationship with them. You convert them into a client. You provide this incredible experience. You help them find their ideal property, you lead them to their perfect terms for their sale, whatever that is. I mean, it takes Herculean effort. And for context, not to interrupt you, but we have this exact uh, model in a different way. And what Mary Cheatham just described, the, the transaction part of it, where you're really working hard to push this boulder up a hill to yeah. get your client to the closing table. Um, this is just another way to look at it. Yeah, that's what it feels like, right? Yeah. It's like you're taking a boulder and pushing it up a hill. So so here's the thing about us as agents is that we are so distracted by something that's bright and shiny. And so what we'll do is we will actually 
push the boulder up the hill. And then we kind of forget about those clients because we're moving on to the next thing. We don't do a good job of staying in touch with them. We know that. I'm sure y'all have heard it a hundred times, but it bears repeating that the National Association of Realtors says that this incredibly high percentage of folks would use their same agent. Mm -hmm. But when it comes time to transact business again, they can't remember who it is. Right. So what does that tell you? So what we're doing we did the math and what we figured out is that if a, a, a median sale price in 2022 was 384.5 and if an average commission is 5.3% total, we divided that in half and figured out that you've got essentially $10,731 in commission per side. So if someone's buying and selling, that's $21,462 in commission every time they transact business that you're leaving on the table because you're not automating the way that you stay in touch with them. And you're not automating providing them content that is relevant to them, regardless of where they are in that cycle. Absolutely. And we found mm -hmm. that email is a solution to that mm -hmm. amongst other marketing tools, but email is the main thing that we um, typically use for retention marketing. So you guys can see under that big loyalty um, word, we have retention marketing in there. That's people who have transacted with you, that know and love you, like that you contact with. But there's another piece of marketing too called attraction marketing. This is just what we call it. I, I don't know if it's in a text. Book. It, yeah, who knows? But it's the marketing that you do to get people to bring you their boulder, to um, get them to come into your web. We say web a lot, but I guess database is a better webs and boulders. Yep, is a better <laughs> a better way to say that. Yeah. So we have attraction marketing and retention marketing, and email does both. So we're gonna kind of tell you guys the five things that we know for sure about the power of email. That's right. And and these also, there are things we love about email, but they're also things that help guide you in the way you structure. So the first thing is that they are a buffet of information. Absolutely. So they're a great way to provide, um, of course, real estate content, but it's also a great way to provide information about things that have nothing to do about real estate. That's exactly right. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that every week, or how, whatever your cadence is, whether it's monthly, whatever that might be. But each time you send an email, you have to make sure it's not just all about real estate. It's got to have information in it that appeals to folks, again, regardless of where they are in that cycle, whether they're about to buy or sell, have just bought or sold, or are somewhere in those next, they say on average of seven years, yeah. um, that, that, you're, that they're just you know owning a home and happy as clams, but they want to open your emails because of the information that you provide. So Rich, that's number one. What would you say is a like general percentage of um, people who are in your database or on your email list that are in transaction? I would say people who are either in transaction or are considering it. I mean, it's less than 5%. Yeah. So a majority know, I mean, of the people opening your emails are not interested in buying or selling at this point. So, um, and we hit them over the head with real estate, y'all. Yeah. Like that's, you can't just do that. You have to create a buffet. Absolutely. Number two, they're basically free. So just to give you guys a brief breakdown, we'll go over this in a little bit again, but um, for example, we design our emails, we'll show you screenshots later too, in Canva, the body of our emails in Canva, and then we upload those images into MailChimp as our um, email platform to send those out. So um, Canva, there's a free version, there's also a pro version, which is $12.99 a month. That's $12.99. Um, correct. Yeah. And then MailChimp is just based on the number of emails and MailChimp and other email platforms that are similar. We do not discriminate based on email right. platforms. Some use commands. Yes. There's all kinds of great options. And a lot of them are based on how many emails you send per month. So for example, MailChimp, you can send up to 1,000 emails per month for free. Um, so say you have an email list of 250 people um, and you send them an email a week, that's 1,000 emails and you're, you're reaching them in their inbox for free every week. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. So very, very low cost, very high impact. Yes. Um, the, the high impact portion ties right in with number three, they're easily forwardable. We're not sure that forwardable is a word, but we're, we're going for it. I don't know if it is. Yeah. But you get what we're saying. So what we're saying is, whereas if, if I receive a mailer and I know that I've got a neighbor or a friend or someone from church who's interested in buying property, I've got to remember to take it to them. Yep. 
Well, with an email, all I do is hit forward. So we get a lot of inquiries from folks who are not currently on our email list, but they'll say so-and-so forwarded me this and I'm interested in this property or interested in something else, some other piece of content that was included in the email that they have questions about. So, you know, you, they kind of take on a life of their own once they're gone and they, they can spread easily. Right, right from the click of a button. I, I just love that. So easy. Number four, the insights or the, the stats that emails provide are endless. So um, on most email platforms like MailChimp, Constant Contact, Command, what, BombBomb, whatever you guys use, you can see who's clicking on links the most. So um, if you're if you sent an email and you look back and um, someone clicked on a property, a specific property over five times, odds are they're interested in it. So, so you know who reached out to call them. Right. You know who they were, you know what they clicked on. Yeah. So it it it's but there's all different kinds of ways you can break it down also. So it gives you insight into what that one person's interested in, but you can also tell, gosh, this piece of content got tons of traction. And sometimes it's in the way you presented it. Sometimes it's in where it falls in the body of your email. So it just, there's so much information that you can glean about what people want to hear and how they want to receive that content. If you really pay attention to the insights from emails. Yep. So instant gratification there. Yes. The last one is my favorite, personally. I don't know why. It just it's is. It's a good one. You're not relying on an algorithm for emails to work. So we were talking about this recently with, with social media. Say you put together a great social media post and you're really pumped about it and it does not get the engagement that you were hoping for. It's not your fault. It's just it didn't get in, get in front of the right people because of how Facebook and Instagram might have worked that day. That's right. But That's with, right. But with email, it's guaranteed to get into their into their inboxes. And here's the thing. Let's talk about that. It shows up in their inbox. And, and you know, sure, we want them to open it and engage with it. But guys, even if they don't, your name is showing up in their inbox at whatever cadence that you choose to send your emails out weekly, monthly, whatever that looks like, your name shows up. And so it does. It, it contributes to Mindshare unlike relying on an algorithm where it may or may not show up in their feed. Absolutely. I think that one's a big one. So again, they're a buffet of information. They're basically free. Yep. They're easily forwardable. I can't say that word either. Yep. The insights they provide are endless and you're not relying on an algorithm. All right. Did the screen share stop? Yay. Did. Yay. Okay. That's what we wanted. All right. So y'all, we're going to kind of dive in back into that client relationship cycle and talk about. Um, kind of the common tie between every single person in your database, no matter how big it is. Yeah. And so I think what I would say is we've, we've already said that what you don't want to do is make it all about real estate. Well, so what should it be about? Right. And one of the things I'll say is um, we, our team is coached by Jordan Freed, who's an awesome maps coach. And one of the things that he tells us, like when we don't want to make our phone calls, right. He says, it's not that you're call reluctant, you're value deficient. So you're not call reluctant, you're value deficient. And I think that same, that same thing applies no matter how you're reaching out to people. So in this case, it's not that you don't want to send the email out, it's that you don't know what to put in there, right? And so we want to take that off the table and help you figure out exactly what sort of content you should include. So Mary Cheatham, what's the underlying thing? How, how do you find that content? What's the thing that everyone wants to see? Well, here's the thing. I know there are some folks out there who have kind of niche businesses where your clientele is all interested in one certain thing, or, or you know, you, you may have that. More than likely, you don't. And the thing that is the tie that binds is your community. So more than likely, it's that you live in a town or an area that's awesome. Think about the endless supply of content that comes from your community in the form of new businesses, in the form of uh, nonprofits, events that are happening, um, just your experiences when you're out and about in your community. So there's just there's just. It's, it's, it's a constant source of fresh content. And I think the key to it, guys, is you don't just present the content in your emails as a list of here's what's going on this weekend. I think that that can be a helpful thing to include. But more than that, you really want to infuse these emails and your community content with your personality. Mm -hmm. So it's that you're the guide to your community. And if you can do that, that's something that appeals to going back to that client relationship cycle. That's something that appeals to and engages with those people once you push, push the boulder up the hill, right? And then you and then you want to maintain, they already know and love you. They know what a great job you do. You've already done the hard work. You just got to stay in front of them and you need to provide them with content that's interesting when they're not thinking about their housing, right? And that's when allowing your community to do the heavy lifting is huge. I love that. And again, going back to the retention versus attraction marketing, of course, this, this helps keep those folks 
um, keeps your brand top of mind, yeah. but also we have folks who have joined our email list because they want to know what's happening in the community. Yeah. They've never transacted with us. They're not, I mean, they might never, who knows, but um, we have people who join our list because it's become become a resource for community events and, and things like that. That's exactly right. Um, so we know <laughs> that we're at the end of the day, we're in real estate and we need to service our sellers and market their properties properly. So um, when we were figuring, we can't just include only community content in our emails as much as we would love to. Um, so we found a system that you guys might've heard us talk about before called the bucket system. Um, and it helps categorize our content. So we're not kind of all up in the air with, with what we should put in an email. So we want to share that with you and, yeah. and share the power. Yeah. Of, and of so what, what I would say to us. you guys, as, we're, as we go into look at the screen is think about your buckets may not be our buckets, but ours, um, ours work. And I think they would, they would really work for you with a few little tweaks that we'll talk about. So these are our buckets. This is the type of content that we go to. So when we're putting an email together, we want to make it really easy, right? And what we know is that we want to include a piece of content in every email from each of these four buckets. And okay. by buckets, categories is another way to say buckets. We just like the word bucket and the yes. fact that we can use a bucket icon in a presentation. That's exactly right. Buckets, webs, boulders, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So MC, I'm going to run through each of them and then will you kind of give examples of how we use that? Yeah. And or how we show those. Yeah. Um. So the first bucket is listings, obviously. Yeah. And y'all, once we go through these buckets, we're going to actually show you examples of how we use this content in our emails. So yep. know that. Um, so listings, you know, certainly if you've got a new listing, if you've got a listing that needs some love, um, you've got a seller that's kind of on your back that wants some attention for their listing, anything like that, that you have, if you don't personally have listings, don't worry about it. Just choose some listings from your MLS, choose one in particular, go do a walkthrough, take your own photos, use the MLS photos, whatever you want to do credit that that listing agent, but just you've got plenty of content if you're a member of the MLS where you can advertise listings. So that's that's a big one there. Such a good hack. Number two, still in that real estate realm is market updates. And we do them a little bit differently than we used to. Yeah, we do. And so what I want to say about the market update is Gary always says that we should be the economist of choice for our community, right? And so here's the thing, even if I'm not buying or selling real estate right now, but if I own real estate in this area, am I interested in what property values are doing? Mm -hmm. I am. So I think thinking about who your audience is, is big when you're choosing how to, how to position your market update. I think one mistake people make in this is they overcomplicate it. They make it um, just kind of clunky. What I would say is choose one really simple stat each time you're doing an email and then explain why it matters to people. What does it mean? Are days on market up or days on market down? What's happening with sales prices? How many homes are on the market? But it's why does it matter? Yep. It positions you as the local expert in the real estate realm. And then our next bucket, community, which we've talked about, um, positions you as a local expert in your town, the area that, that you serve. So what are, what are some of our favorite things to share in that community bucket? Oh my gosh. We just, this is so many, it, I know y'all it's like that you ate out and you had a great meal or it's, yeah. it's a find of the week from a local uh, little shop, or it's that you um, have a quick interview with somebody who runs a nonprofit or it's, it's a local need, or it's a great story about somebody who's graduating from high school and they're collecting money for the food pantry. I mean, y'all, it, it can be absolutely anything that you want it to be, just something that is um, interesting and informative. And again, that it's curated by you. Mm -hmm. It has your stamp on it. So these last two buckets are really a great chance to let your personality shine through. It all is, but these two in particular, yep. the, the community piece. And then finally, the team piece. Yeah, this is a big one that I find to be really important to show, again, your personality. I think it's hard sometimes as a business, and I'm sure you guys can relate too, to um, kind of professionally show authenticity. And I think that having a bucket all about your team and things that are happening, um, you know, or with you as an individual exactly agent, right. or family. an individual agent. Yes. If you're an individual agent, I mean, God, just an update of, you know, you've been working away on offers this week. You've gotten to visit a lot of beautiful properties, um, something about, you know, where you guys went for dinner, yeah. um, what's happening with your family. I mean, it can be anything that just lets people get to know a little bit about you in a way that is personal, but certainly in an appropriate way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so not too personal. So great point. Yeah. So these are our four categories from which we pull 
information whenever we put an email together. So most of our emails contain four sections, one from each bucket. Sometimes now that we kind of have gotten the hang of it, we'll include more than one um, of a particular bucket. Say we have two listing buckets maybe, or three community buckets in, in addition to the other four. So yeah. That's right. And, and I'll say one more thing about this team or individual bucket, which is as you're as you're thinking about the content you want to put there, people want to know who they're working with, yeah. right? This is going to be a big deal that they're going to work with you. And so they want to understand, are your personalities going to click? What are you like? Are you approachable? So this is a good chance for you to show that. Absolutely. So we're going to show you guys some screenshots from some recent emails that we've sent out. Um, we, I, I cannot take credit for these. We have a fantastic marketing specialist, Andy, who puts these together every week. Um, Want to give you guys just a couple logistics. Um, we send our email out every Thursday at 6 p.m. to a database of 22,000 people. Um, we did not by any means start by sending an email every week at 6 p.m. to 22,000 people. Um, we started very inconsistently. Maybe it was monthly. They didn't look very cute. Um, and, and they were raising my hand because right. that well, was all me. <laughs> and they went to like a hundred people. Exactly. Like, they went so, to like everybody in my family twice. Sure. So um, just to give you guys context that the stuff that we're talking about today and that we'll continue to talk about in the coming weeks are, um, they work. And um, through trial and error, we found we found solutions. That's exactly right. So. We kick us off with the listings bucket right there. On yes. The okay. So we're going to do two buckets per screen. So let's start with the listing screen, uh, excuse me, the listings bucket. So you can see in this case, we did a just listed, mm -hmm. we did an exterior photo, just kind of some basic information. You want to make it punchy, right? And we point out some of the best things about the property. It's clean. And then of course there is click here to see more. So that's the great thing about emails is you want to condense the information that everybody has to see and then provide places where they can shoot off and go and really dig into the things that they're most interested in. Yep. So listing bucket, check. Next is our team bucket. Um, this was a recent, um, I almost said post. It was a recent feature we did. Um, we moved offices recently, which is very exciting. And we took photos of our team kind of mid-construction in our new office space and shared that with our database. Uh, we we really find that people are interested in what people in our on our team are doing. And, and when we can share it in a way um, like this, where um, you know, we're we're sharing multiple pieces of news at once, it's really great. It is. Next. Yep. Okay community bucket. So here's a great example of that. This is um, <laughs> find of the week, a new restaurant, acai bowl place opened in downtown Moorhead. So it is all about, um, you know, kind of, you know, information about that business, but then also what is an acai bowl? And then again, guys, you can shoot off and go and click to learn more about beach bowls. Yes, I love that. Also, we're a little behind on the times because we just got an acai bowl place here. I don't know where y'all are from, but also I think we have a ghost on our screen. I don't we know do. if you guys can it's see that. It's drawing pictures on our screen. I love it. It keeps things spicy. Yeah. Um, and then our last bucket that we have an example of is that market update that we were talking about. So um, in this case, Mary Cheatham, she does carpool videos where she'll sit in her car, of course, with it parked um, after she drops her kids off at school. And um, we'll kind of share that one stat and tell the story of why it matters to people watching whether they're interested in selling or not. So yeah, so there's a million ways you can do a market message. You could just do bullet points. You could do something quick that you write up. It can be anything, but video is really easy, y'all. It's a one minute video that I film on my iPhone. And then one of the things that we think is key is some people aren't going to watch the video. They're just not going to. And so then to put below kind of a caption of exactly what you talk about. And again, guys, call to action. Click here to find your current property value. Good one. Yeah, yeah. So y'all just take a breath. <laughs> I think we should. Um, so we want to recap where things stand so far. Um, we are wrapping up. This, told you it would be quick, um, but we're wrapping up. We just want to recap what we've talked about. Yeah. So I think the big takeaways at this point are if you're not using email, start now. And what this should say is if you're not consistent start being consistent. Don't, don't make it overwhelming, but you need to establish what your cadence is and hold yourself to it. It makes all the difference. If you can establish what your buckets are, it makes that really a whole lot easier. Yep. And then the next one is, of course, they should appeal to those who are transacting and that are not transacting at all. You made such a great point about this, about how you're interviewing for the job every time you send an email. Will you explain that? Yeah, I do think that, guys. So think about it. Like when you send an email out to someone who's not currently transacting or considering a sale or a purchase, you are showing them 
the sort of effort that you put into these emails, you're showing them your personality, you are becoming the economist of choice for them. So then you're basically interviewing for the job, y'all. They already know who you are. They understand the sort of caliber of the work that you do so that when it comes time for them to buy or sell, who are they going to think of? It's so good. I love yeah. that. That was my aha from the other day when you, when you shared that. that was yeah. Really yeah. interesting. And that'll, that'll light a fire to keep you consistent because um, no matter, it was Jordan who was talking about the event-minded versus process-minded um, outlook on things. So I'm sure you guys all have heard of Ken Posek. Um, he's a YouTube, you know, Phenom. wizard. Phenom. And yeah. um, his kind of mindset when he was starting his YouTube empire with real estate, of course, um, was not to get likes or comments or engagement by any means. It was actually just to post consistently. So to be process-minded, the process of him making 100 videos with no expectation of engagement actually grew his YouTube channel more than he ever could have hoped. Yeah. He wasn't focused on the outcome. He was not outcome-minded. He was, he was process-minded. Process -minded. Yep. That's exactly right. And then the last thing um, about the buckets, I mean, that saves brain calories. I don't know, Donald Miller people, brain calories. It saves you brain calories so much. And we often get asked about one bucket in particular and how to present those two. Yeah. So like, for example, um, one of the things we get asked about a lot is our listing bucket. Cause y'all, it gets so boring, you know, when you're like, it's a new listing, it's a, you know, it just, so one of the things that we've done, we actually have a list. Well, let me, let me pause. Meg and I are actually going to be back here again next week. We're going to be teaching a class that you guys can sign up for. It's a two-part class um, that we'll tell you about. It's just two hours, but we're going to do a really deep dive into um, tactically how to put these emails together, how to really get started. We actually, Meg has made templates that everybody who comes to the class is going to get the templates. But, but one of the ones that we get a lot of questions about, and we'll share the list of all 15, is the way to keep those new listings or listings at all to keep them fresh. And so here's a great example of one of the 15 ways that we treat at the listing bucket in our emails. Um, I love this one, yeah. which is it allows us to feature multiple listings in, at one time in one email. And so what we did here was this was Super Bowl Sunday. And we said, okay, Super Bowl Sunday, which one of these four living rooms, we rounded up four living rooms for you to choose from, from where you'd like to watch the big game. Yep. Right. And so we show all the living rooms. It has the addresses and then people can click and they can click on each one of the four listings. So it drives traffic to all of them, but it's a cool little comparison thing. It's creative. It shows some photos of the houses that may not often get highlighted. So just a really, a really fun way to approach it that people like. And we have so many, I was just talking to Andy about it today. We have so many fun ideas for this, for the list of 15. Um, but some other examples of this Super Bowl Sunday scenario is, I mean, we live, we live at the beach in North Carolina. So, I mean, a lemonade on the front porch, do a front porch roundup or, you know, a margarita on the back porch if it's <laughs> Friday and, and time appropriate. Um, but just, there are so many possibilities with these little roundups, we like to call them. And you're able to feature multiple properties at once in one fell swoop. Yeah. So Meg, why don't you tell people and y'all then we've, I know we've, we've, we're running short on time. We try to talk fast, which might've been annoying, <laughs> but um, we, um, as we're wrapping up, we're going to let you guys know about the class. So if you want to join us for the class, you can, we'd love it. Um, Meg, what can you tell people about it? So you're going to walk away with um, drag and drop templates that you can, well, we'll tell you exactly how to use, exactly how to put into your specific email platform, and then um, how to go through each bucket and make sure you're creating content for each that works and that um, creates action from people uh, who are reading your emails. Um, so if you guys are part of James's Inspire group, if you guys want to run over to that Facebook page in a little bit, Grace is going to drop um, a discount code for that. Um, there is an early bird pricing for, um, I think it's Friday through midnight, if you want to go ahead and sign up for that. Um, and then you can sign up all the way to next Thursday. May 25th at one o'clock to two o'clock and then uh, June 1st from one o'clock to two o'clock Eastern time as well for our next one. We're keeping it nice and choppy and very tactical. We That's like exactly we right. like things. Y'all, I know specific. it's like hot, some high D energy over here. If I'm going to come to something, teach me something, yes. you know, like yes. tell me what to do. <laughs> um, so Grace, I don't know. I know you're being the chat fairy. Are there any questions about the class or anything that we can answer in the last couple of minutes here? What's amazing is that a lot of things that people have asked, I think will be answered by the class. And I yep. cannot stress this enough. If you are in Inspire, check your email. It has already been mailed out. 
uh, the discount code by James himself. He's not, he's teaching a class in Chicago today, but of course he did that already. Um, so do that before you sign up. Um, I'm going to add the link in here too. Um, and then in terms of questions, um, I mean, really it's a lot about the tools you use, why you use Canva versus MailChimp. Um, and really actually what might be helpful for all the buckets that you have, do those go into one email or are those spread out amongst different emails? That's a great question. We yes. have a barking dog. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but oh, I just started no. dying. <laughs> Let me get it. Oh my gosh. Okay, great. So you're talking about the buckets for the emails and, and how do each go in each email? Just, yeah, just some clarity around that would be perfect. Sure, absolutely. So the way that we started with our buckets in, in the email scenario um, is we just did one bucket per email. So you saw our four um, listings, market update, community, and team. Our first kind of email following the system had listings, market update, community, then team. That's it. So that's All how we started. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then you can grow from there. It took practice and we didn't do this weekly to start again. We, we followed the system consistently for, um, you know, monthly emails, broke it down to bi-weekly emails, and then went to a weekly email format where now um, it's kind of just part of our, part of our week. <laughs> yeah. And Grace, do you know, can you tell people, I see some questions. I don't know what, what, what is the pricing for the class? Oh, yeah. the... I can, I can go into that too. Oh, great. Sorry. So no. I'm not sure of the inspired discount. Um, I think. But I'm not going to guess it, but yeah. um, I know the early bird is 119 for this is for both classes. Each class is one hour. You walk away with templates, all that stuff. Um, and then the um, after that early bird, after Friday at midnight, it'll be 149 per ticket. But that covers both classes. So we promise there will be lots of tactical things. We're going to talk about time savers to help you build a subject line. I don't know about y'all, but the amount of time we've spent staring at our computer screen, agonizing. What will make people open? Yeah, exactly. And and when are the, um, when are the classes? One is next week and one is the following week. So yep. we're, we're knocking this out so that that way, while we've got the momentum going, we can get you guys moving. Thursday, May 25th from one to two Eastern time. And then Thursday, the following Thursday, June 1st from one to two Eastern time. And we'll, we'll, be taking a lot of questions. It'll be interactive. Um, we know we couldn't take a ton of questions this time um, just because of the, we didn't want to take up too much of y'all's time, but um, we will, you know, answer any questions you guys might have about emails in there. Yeah. Great. Well, and then the last thing, and thank you guys for keeping it quick and engaging and filled with information. Um, is there anything that's, uh, that's different about the two classes in terms of the content that will be covered? Or is it really like a must see to attend both? Ooh, oh yeah, it'll be different. Yeah, they'll definitely be different. They'll build on each other. And so on um, the first class, one of the things we want to make sure too is that we're addressing the questions that everybody has. So we'll incorporate some of the questions from today into the first class and then from the first class into the second class. But we're going to get do a really deep dive into exactly how to execute this, show you guys how to use the templates that we've built and really talk about how to create content that's engaging. Yep. And the classes will be recorded and um, the presentations and all the resources will be shared if you do sign up, but you're not able to make it at that specific time amazing it's almost like you guys are crazy pros this was <laughs> awesome thank you so much thank you for bringing a dog in at the very end like you guys know. i know it's buddha say hi you know yeah. what you're doing right, you guys professional awesome. we're not professional we, we are pros but not professional i don't know yeah okay i love it well this has been awesome and this this recording will go out to everyone who signed up to take this free class. It will also be up on Pivot. If you're looking for that discount code, I promise it will be up. We will have all this information out in just a few minutes. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Grace, thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys for being Well, you're not doing a QA and a to ask questions or you, so, you missed some of the questions in the chat. So sure. we, some of those questions, um, we if they're about the class coming up, we can answer yep. those now. Um, but otherwise, if they're about this content, then the class is going to be really helpful for answering those questions. Yes. And if you have anything else outside of that, grace at jamesdshaw.com, send them to me and we will make sure that everything gets answered. Anything that you need will happen. Cool. Thanks, Grace. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye.